In this problem, we're told to calculate the displacement and velocity at times of A, 0.5, B, 1, C, 1.5, and D, 2 seconds, for a ball thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Take the point of release to be Y equals 0. So the first thing we always want to do for kinematic problems like this one is to draw what's going on. Right? So we have this uh, ball, right? And it's going to be thrown straight up. Right? We know the initial velocity of the ball right, is going to be 15 meters per second right? because it's being thrown up at uh, this speed. Right? And so basically what we're trying to do is we're going to find how far it travels upwards at different times. Right? So we're trying to find the speed. Right? So imagine it's going to travel up for the first one, which is 0.5. And what we're going to try and do is find the distance, right? which is basically delta y, how far it changes in, right? in that. And then we're also trying to find the velocity. So we're trying to find v, right? v. So we're trying to solve for those two things. So now that you understand what's going on, let's just go ahead and write down our given. So what information are we told? So the first thing that we're given is the initial velocity, right? So we're given the initial velocity, which is 15 meters per second, right? And so what this type of problem is, it's called a free fall problem. Basically, any problem where you throw something straight up, you have to assume the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And the reason this is, is because the acceleration due to gravity is uh, 9.8 meters per second, right? Because there's going to be some force acting on the ball that causes it to go down, right? When you throw something, it always gets comes... Right, always comes back to Earth. So essentially, there's some force acting on it, right? And then it's negative because it's going downwards, right? It's going in the opposite direction that the ball is traveling. Right? It's going upwards, but the Earth is going to be uh, pulling it down, right? The acceleration due to gravity. So that's why acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's going to be the same for all of these, right? And so what we're trying to find, right, is V, right, V at different times, right? So V equals question mark because we're trying to find that. Right, we're trying to find delta y or the change in y at different times. Right, so these are the two variables we're finding. And so what we're finding it as at different times. So t is going to be equal to different things in different scenarios. Right, for a it's going to be 0.5 seconds. For b it's just one second. Uh, for c it's 1.5 seconds. And then for d it's going to be two seconds. Right, so basically what we want to do is just solve them differently with different times. So we're going to use these variables. They're going to stay constant. Right, but the time is what's going to change. So we're just going to solve it for each of these different times. So let's just start with A. So for A, let's go ahead and find the velocity in delta y after A is 0.5 seconds. All right, so which of our kinematic equations do we want to use? So keep in mind what we're solving for. Uh, what we want to find is, let's just start with uh, displacement first. So let's find delta y first. So the equation we're going to use for delta y, and it's going to be the same for all of them, is this one right here. V sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared, right? Because notice we have V sub 0. Uh, we have a and then the time, right, we're given. So we can find the change in uh, y, right? It says delta x, but it's the same. It doesn't make a difference. So delta y is what we're trying to solve for, right? So that's what, the one we're going to use uh, for finding delta y in all of these, right? So delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared, right? So that's delta y. And then for the velocity, what we're going to use is the top one, uh, v equals v sub 0 plus a times t, right? Because we have the time, right? We have the initial velocity, and we have the acceleration, minus 9.8. So all we have to do is just plug them in and solve. So... Uh, yeah, we just got to plug in. So I'm going to do A for you, and then I'm just going to give you the answers uh, for the rest of them because all you really have to do is plug in information. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you how to do the first one. So all we have to do uh, is just plug in, right? So delta Y is going to be equal to uh, V sub 0, right, which is 15, times uh, the time for the first one, which is A is 0.5. So 0.5 uh, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, uh, and then times T squared. So T is just 0.5 again, so 0.5 squared. Uh, right, so you just want to go ahead and do this. So I'll plug this in. So 15 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 times minus 9.8 times 0.5 uh, squared. And so when you do this, you're going to get uh, that it's equal to uh, delta y, right? This is delta y. It's equal to 6.275, and then it's going to be meters, right? Because we measure distance in meters. So delta y is 6.275 meters. That's going to be how far it travels for A, uh, right, in 0.5 seconds. Now let's find the velocity. So the velocity v is equal to v sub 0, which is 15, right? That's not going to change. Plus a negative, right, because it's minus 9.8. So you're basically just minusing 9.8 times the time, which is just 0.5. So 15 uh, minus 9.8 times 0.5. When you go ahead and do that, right, you're going to get it equals about 10.1. So V is going to be equal to 10.1, and then the units are uh, meters per second, right? So that's going to be that one. Yeah, so 10.1 meters per second, that's going to be the velocity. So these are basically be your answers to A, 
now I'm just going to give you the answers for B, right? So the only difference is you're going to be just plugging in different times, right? Because the only thing changing is the time. So just make sure you plug in different times uh, when you actually show your work for this problem. But I'm just going to give you the answers. So for B, one second, uh, the change in Y, right? So the distance it's going to travel is 10.1 meters. Uh, and then the velocity at that time is going to be 5.19 uh, meters per second. So this is B. Uh, for C, when you do it, you're going to get... 11.46, uh, right? So delta y, it's going to travel up 11.46 meters. And then uh, the velocity is going to be uh, 0.29 meters per second. And what you should notice is, right, it's going to get slower and slower because acceleration is slowing down, which makes sense, right? The higher up it gets because the time is going on, it's going to slow down. So uh, that's C. And then for D, uh, for D, you're going to get, uh, it's going to be delta y equals uh, 10.38 meters. So what you should notice is it's actually lower, right? And so you'll see because uh, the velocity for this one at this time is going to be negative, right? Because we're going back downs, uh, back downwards, right? Because it makes sense because it travels up and then goes back down, right? Because eventually it's going to hit its highest point and come back down. But it's going to be minus uh, 4.62 meters per second. So yeah, these were your answers to A. Uh, this was B, right? Uh, this is C. And then this was uh, D. But yeah, so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.